Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and I'm back with an initial review for you of the Saucony Triumph 17. This is a shoe that loads and loads of you have been telling me to go and review, to try out, because you thought I'd really like it, and you were right. So that mystery shoe that I posted up about on Strava isn't one of those carbon thingamajigs, it's this highly cushioned runner from Saucony. It's sleek, it's black, it's very cushioned. It's the first shoe that I've actually reviewed from Saucony, the first one I actually have purchased. This one goes out to you, Kev Burmaster. Power to you, Kev. I've got to say, guys, I've purchased this shoe like I've purchased many, many other shoes. It's not been sent to me or anything like that. It's a UK size 11, and it weighs in about 330 grams, so it's quite a heavy weight. It's up there with the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. I think the Glide Ride somewhere up there as well and the New Balance 1080 V10. I seem to be purchasing a lot of very heavy shoes recently, but this one's a little different. So there's loads and loads of videos of this one out there already, going into the specs and talking about foam and this, that and the other. I'm gonna get straight to the point with this one. First of all, I wanna give a special shout out to Simon over at Up and Running in Bournemouth. If you're in the local area there, please go and check out the shop if you haven't been there, or even if you live a bit further afield, go over and check it out. Really great store, super service, very knowledgeable and friendly staff. Simon was fantastic. I tested out also the Hoka Clifton 6. Didn't really get on with that one, but as soon as I put this one on foot, I knew I was in for a treat. I had a really great bricks and mortar experience at Up and Running, so please do go over and check it out. Try and support your local stores. So initial run in the Triumph 17 was an eight mile effort at roughly seven minutes 30 per mile, that's about 4 minutes 40 per kilometre pace. Conditions were chilly, around about 5 degrees centigrade. Still some standing water on the ground from our friend Dennis that visited us at the weekend. I managed to grab some earlier footage. I knew that I was only going to get to run uh, later in the evening due to the fact that my daughter's here uh, staying with me at the moment. So she came out with me and acted as a bit of a makeshift camera person. She did a great job. So earlier footage is from some test runs I did uh, whilst we were out walking the old hound. There was no chance of getting any decent footage at night. It was gonna be very, very dark. I just needed to get out there and do the testing. So firstly, to the upper of the Triumph 17. So on lace up, I got that soft sort of warming, comforting Asics type hug over my foot. That tongue in here is really wide. It's really very well cushioned. I think some people have kind of found that it's a little tight kind of across the forefoot and across the midfoot. I think it's due to that tongue actually. I loved it. It's kind of odd, the shoe actually in hand. You look at it and think, what? How's this going to work? It kind of reminds me of a Etni or a kind of van skate shoe almost. There's kind of some now very common elasticated pieces around here. It's kind of that booty style upper. I found the tongue just sat in the right place. It didn't move around at all during my eight mile initial effort. I love the toe box of this shoe. It really is wonderful. There's almost like a 3D kind of feeling to the toe box where the kind of little breathable parts are cut out there. They're quite deep. I don't know, it looks a little bit like something that Darth Vader might wear. I don't know, does Darth Vader run? I can imagine it get a bit warm and all that sort of stuff, all that gear. The front has some interesting construction actually. It's some sort of rigid or at least more rigid material around here, certainly on the inner section of the toe box, just to provide a bit of structure there, a bit of a framework. The eyelets cut through the material across the midfoot here, apart from at the very end, the ankle section there. So perhaps a little worried about how that will work over time, whether the laces will kind of wear away at the upper a little bit. The eyelets at the ankle are a little bit more reinforced. But it's just something to bear in mind, I think, as the shoe is utilized and whether it will break down or not. There's quite a rigid heel counter here at the back of the shoe, but it's super soft and very plush. It's, it's very smooth, actually, the material used in the heel. I got a decent lockdown over the front of the foot, but I did need to make some adjustments after about two miles into the run. Personally, I think this shoe is true to size. Some might say it's a little on the snug side. I think it's to do with that tongue. I would go true to size if I were you, but again, check in a bricks and mortar store if you can. Even with thicker socks, breathability was really good in the Triumph 17. I think my only minor gripe about the upper really is the very end of the tongue towards the toe box here. Just kind of feels a little bit unfinished, I guess. But it didn't cause me any bother. That kind of tongue slightly irritated my left foot, but it was gone after a few miles, so it might have just been a small break-in issue. My only gripe, really, with the upper 
is these kind of rope-like laces. Again, they're very elasticated. And as I say, after a couple of miles, I did have to re-tighten the left shoe just to get a slightly better lockdown. I didn't really get any heel slip. I just felt it was a little bit loose across the midfoot. I think those laces make tightening the shoe a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. So it's certainly something I'll be looking to mod and switch out as I progress with the Saucony Triumph 17. So I'm gonna give this one 2.5 out of three for the upper midsole next. And it does look like boost. See, it really does look like boost. It's the same kind of stuff, although is it? It, to me, feels a hell of a lot more cushioned. It doesn't feel anywhere as dense as Boost. Instantly when I put this one on and I tried it on a treadmill as well in the store, it just feels really bouncy. It feels responsive, springy. It feels better distributed in terms of the midsole uh, than the Ultra Boost 20. And I love, I really, really love the introduction of another layer of that material inside the shoe. It kind of sits between the insole and the midsole. And it just makes this one a dream underfoot. I can't tell you how excited I was when I put this shoe on. It just felt superb. Like nothing else I've tried, guys, really. You do need to try this shoe. So the stuff they've used in here in the midsole is called Power Run Plus. It is different to Boost. I do recommend you test it out. I'm certainly a fan on the treadmill. It felt good. The bounce back was considerable. And I found it vastly more engaging than the experience in the New Balance 1080 V10 that I've tested out very recently. I'd suggest also it trumps the Ultra Boost 20, the Rincon is certainly more engaging than the Asics Glide Ride. It was night and day between this and the other shoe I tested in store, which was the Clifton 6. I think, aside from the ridiculous energy return that's present within Vaporfly shoes such as the 4% and the Next Percent, this is the most springy and cushioned shoe that I have tested out of recent time. I was just won over with it straight away on the initial run, it was an absolute joy. I mean, picture this guys as a sort of tired dad has been keeping his daughter busy all day and he gets a chance to head out running at quarter past 10 in the evening and he has the time of his life. That's the sort of enjoyment I'm talking about. I think the insole in this shoe is awesome as well. Simon was quick to point that out to me in the store. How totally awesome is that, right? That's an insole. It's very sculpted as well, this thing. It's just a piece of art. It's not the sort of shoe I normally go for this, but I love it. I did kind of want the blue one, but now I've got this one. I think those, I think those Kafuzi disciples won't be disappointed. It's just such a good looking shoe, I love it. Yep, there's a lot of cushion in the midsole of this shoe. I can't get away from that. 330 grams is a fair old weight, but that front and back cushioning here is superb. It's still responsive, yet you've got that soft feel. I don't know how they've done it. I found stability of the midsole very consistent during my eight mile initial run. So I'm gonna give this one a three for the midsole. The outsole on the Triumph 17 consists of Saucony's crystal rubber. It's kind of like clear rubber. I set my targets on puddles and standing water and the outsole delivered really well actually. Uh, no slipping on those kind of surfaces. The run was mainly on pavements, uh, a little bit on road. It was nice and quiet so I actually got onto the road for quite a few of the miles. There was lots of standing water left from the old Storm Dennis that had come to stay with us over the weekend and destroy all our fence panels. Traction was great on road, it was great on pavement. Uh, I did hit a couple of grassy areas that were quite muddy and traction was not good on those. I felt some slipping in those slick areas. But overall, it's positive news here for the Triumph 17. Traction's good, it's a road shoe, it's not something you're gonna be running up muddy hills in, being chased by cows. So positive initial thoughts on traction with this shoe. The rubber's spongy, it's flexible, and it's kind of shiny in appearance. You got a more opaque, kind of harder rubber in the heel section of the shoe. So a little bit of slip in here and there, but in the main, good. I'm gonna give this one a 2.5 out of three for the outsole. Moving on to value. So I paid a little more in store than I did if I could have got this online, but that's besides the point, really. The sheer enjoyment of first putting this on and then hitting the treadmill and realizing just how wonderful it was, was worth that little extra cost. I have to say, this is one of the most comfortable and exciting shoes that I've purchased. Kev, I wish I'd listened to you earlier. Overall, the quality of the shoes right up there. Uh, there's no loose ends, everything's just put together really, really well. From that perspective, things are right up there. I found that over the eight miles, my cadence was a little lower than usual, 
but my heart rate was also lower. I think it averaged out about 140 beats per minute. It made that kind of seven and a half minute tempo pace that I've been utilizing for ooh, months and months now. Very reachable and achievable, even late at night when I was tired. It's just such an engaging kind of shoe. It gives you so much back as you're sort of pushing down. You want to sort of slap your midfoot onto the floor each time with each strike. Yeah, it was a tough day, lots of traveling, probably not eating the best foods, but I still produced a good performance within that session. I think testament to the shoe. You can probably pick this one up for around about 125 pounds over here in the UK. I think that presents pretty good value over things like the Ultra Boost 20, which is just overpriced. Certainly, I don't think it looks as flashy as the New Balance 1080 V10, but it's got it where it counts, kid. It's certainly a more cushioned option than the A6 Glide Ride, and actually, let's just not even go there. So certainly looking forward to more miles in the Triumph 17. I think in terms of value, at this point, I'm gonna give it a 2.5. If you've got any questions about the Triumph 17, please post them up in the comments below. I'll do my very best to try and answer as many of the questions from the viewers as I can. I'm keen to get it back out on these as soon as possible, so please do check out the Strava, where I'm gonna be trying to wade through my kind of backlog of shoes now. I really need to get some considerable miles in to try and eat away at those outsoles. It's about that time for me to make like a tree and leave. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the thumbs up so that we can push the video forwards and get it out to a few new runners. Make sure you share it with your friends and click that notification bell. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.